Esther for that report, these as the new crop and generation of, of, of the youth pretty much standing up and saying no to matters to do with Finance Bill 2024-2025. And someone else who's actually saying no to Finance Bill 2024-2025 is the DAPK party leader, Eugenio Malwa Moshiwa. Welcome on board. Thank and you as we much. just have this discussion, yes. um, now the 2024-2025 bill has seen a lot of changes, including yesterday a statement that was given. Just what is your position on that? My position is that it's too little, too late, <laughs> and uh, it's not good enough. And uh, the fact that they've made a few changes, I mean, it's like a poison drink. Uh, they've poured just part of it, but the real poison is still there. Mm -hmm. And we want to urge, uh, uh, particularly our parliamentarians, not to lower their guard and not to be hoodwinked by the few changes made. There are still issues that arose from the 20, uh, uh, 23 finance bill that doubled you know, the cost of living, particularly on fuel uh, from uh, VAT from 8% to 16%. Mm -hmm. And in this bill, they are still adding fuel levy from 18% to 25%, meaning fuel prices are still going to be up. And once that, even if you live out bread, the burden is not lessened in any way. And I believe uh, some of these things were put there intentionally uh, as a red herring. Uh, to, you know, who are doing Kenyans. But the burden remains, the pressure must remain. And we're terribly proud of our Gen Z generation. We have seen them come out in their numbers. I think Baba is the one who best summarized. <laughs> uh, particularly the young lady who said, Baba, you showed us the way, and now is our time. Mm -hmm. They're taking charge. Mm -hmm. Let's take our country back. So what would be the strategy in Parliament that you're pushing uh, your, your members to focus on as they push for this agenda to drop this bill? I think for them, our position remains the same, and uh, this uh, bill is incurably defective. There are many concerns of citizens that have not been addressed. What has been done is very superficial. So don't uh, lower your guard, go all the way. Mm -hmm. And for the uh, Kenyans, please maintain the pressure. Mm -hmm. Let us put pressure on our MPs to make sure they do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I believe if the pressure is maintained, this bill should go down. Mm -hmm. And we must give partic public participation the true meaning it has in Article 10 of our constitution. It's not a favor uh, from the state uh, where they can, uh, you know, listen and call a few people to state and say, we have changed this. No, no. It, it should be a legal process and I urge parliament to pass the public participation bill so that we properly have legal structures to ensure the voice of the people is heard through the representatives, not them being called to state house to change a few things. And this is just confirming our fear that the state capture of parliament Laws should be made in Parliament, not in State House. Yes. <laughs> and finally, Mwishimuya, now, uh, when we talk about issues to do with uh, the, the, the public participation, uh, there has been a lot of cry, hue and cry, about the process saying that it did not really capture what is enshrined in the Constitution. But that aside as well, we see uh, the Kenyans who were arrested yesterday participating in, uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the peaceful protest. What is just your position on that? My, my position is that... Uh, if William Ruto and his uh, Kenya Kwanza team could see uh, the wrong things in this bill and uh, propose some changes by themselves, then there was nothing wrong with the young people who could not go to state house to express their views, to do it on the streets. So they were exercising their democratic right under Article 37 of our constitution, and none of them should have been arrested. And we are urging, and as their opposition, we are going to support them. We've sent lawyers to ensure that those who are still in are released. But we're urging Kenya Kwans to release unconditionally all those who protested against this bad law, because they themselves have acknowledged the bad law. They themselves are trying to change it. But we are saying as the opposition, it's not good enough. And we shall not lessen the pressure until the bill falls. What will be good enough for the opposition? I think what will be good enough would be what the judges have been asking, what uh, the private sector have been asking, and this thing ought to have been withdrawn, mm -hmm. proper public participation done, and for it to come back with the input of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. I think it, it's not too late. It can still be done. Mm -hmm. But doing the artificial, uh, you, you know, it's like addressing a wound that is still deeply uh, septic. We, 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 we must by the bullet and say, throw it out, let's do it again. Yes. Eugene Omala, DAP party Kenya leader and also uh, from the opposition says that this bill must be done right, that as the opposition, the pressure continues, Gen Z's good job for what was done.